everyone. On behalf of everybody, uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Institute of Directors, I would like to welcome all of you to this morning's event. As uh, Mr. Kulatilaka said, it's a very topical issue, and which is why IFC is, it was actually IFC who initiated it, and we are thankful to IFC for partnering with us, and thank you also to the CSC for very readily agreeing to it and making all the arrangements. Just to give you a brief note about the Sri Lanka Institute of Directors, we have been in uh, existence for over 15 years now and uh, our primary focus has been uh, to uh, talk about governance and best boardroom practices. And this message we have taken to the provinces as well, not just in Colombo. Again with IFC we have done many uh, workshops in rural areas talking to them about the importance of very simple procedures which they are not really aware of. But our flagship program is what we call the Board Leadership Training Program. Uh, we are on our third uh, intake right now and it, it's extremely useful and the, the people who have participated have very, very positive remarks about it and it's been very well received. So for those people whom I have heard complaining about there are no women to put on, put on our boards, I would suggest you please send them to this program, your senior women, and then once they are trained, they definitely become very capable people. Rather than looking at your own little circle of people you know and people whom you are familiar with, there is a vast array of people outside. So please, I urge the directors and other chairmen of companies to use this pool. Uh, we also, in addition, do a lot of uh, events in the evenings or sometimes mornings where we get uh, industry leaders to come and talk about uh, their experiences. Then also we have discussions about very topical issues. That again has been very well received because a lot of people we find like to listen to and learn from the others' experiences. Uh, again with IFC, we are very thankful. We are having a series of programs this year, where we are talking, we are training SMEs, we are training uh, nominee directors, because that's again an area where we have found people just go as for direct, uh, to become a director without knowing what their role is. So this is specifically uh, targeting the nominee directors. Then we are also having again another program on women on boards, it's a one day training program, and also for family businesses. Because this year our focus has, is going to be on family businesses and women on boards. And we are committed to doing that. And uh, so please, as I said before, do send in people and uh, we can definitely together make a contribution to Sri Lanka's economy. Thank you. On the 8th of March this year, by ringing the bell to start trading at stock exchanges around the world, the objective is to bring attention to the importance of gender equality in leadership opportunities in the private sector. As mentioned, the contribution of women to economic growth is widely recognized as of significant value, yet progress has slowed to such an extent that in 2015, the World Economic Forum estimated that the gender gap would not be closed until 21, 21, 33. The theme for International Women's Day in 2016 is pledging for parity. That is for everyone, men and women, committing to take action to accelerate gender parity, individually and collectively, to help women advance equal to their numbers and realize the potential that they have within economies the world over. The idea for the symbolism of bell ringing is an, is an initiative based on the seven women's empowerment principles of the UN Global Compact and UN Women to help empower women in the workplace, in markets, and in the community. Through its subtitle, Equity Means Business, the principles emphasize the business case for corporate action to promote gender principles and women's empowerment. On a global basis, uh, CEOs of companies have been invited to sign a CEO statement of support to the seven principles. And this, the objective is to further the contribution of women in companies and communicate data relating to companies' efforts in this regard. 
In South Asia, uh, IFC has initiated a South Asia Regional Corporate Governance Program uh, funded by the Japanese Ministry of Finance, which will help to grow the demand in South Asia for more qualified female directors in leadership positions. So in India, in particular, this demand has followed regulatory changes that require companies to appoint at least one woman uh, to their boards. So IFC is helping to meet this demand by partnering on initiatives to identify and train female candidates. In Sri Lanka, IFC, uh, as Sri Mel has mentioned, is partnering with the Sri Lanka Institute of Directors to conduct workshops on corporate governance issues with a focus on uh, effective board leadership skills. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you very much for the opportunity to address uh, this very selective audience in uh, this very symbolic context. I'm uh, certainly most delighted on behalf of the World Bank Group, uh, which includes the IFC, of course, and the World Bank itself, to be a participant to, to this event. Uh, there are so many dimensions to the gender gaps that countries are encountering, and not just countries that are middle-income countries or developing countries, but also developed countries, in fact, and particularly in the corporate world. It's a particular challenge in the country I come from, France, particularly when it comes to boards of directors, uh, that uh, when we look at the issue of gender gap in general, a lot, of course, could be said. But since we have here an, an audience which is uh, focused on the uh, financial sector and the capital market and, uh, uh, and the stock exchange, I thought it would be uh, fit to actually focus on the aspects that are of direct concern to uh, this uh, group and the opportunities that exist within that group. Some people might ask at the onset, what, what is really the link between you know, the stock exchange globally and the contribution to gender equality? It may not be obvious to everyone, including people with very good intentions when it comes to the to gender gap. Well, actually, uh, stock exchange globally are actually critically positioned to make valuable contribution to greater gender equality. And uh, that's what I would like to talk about. They can take action uh, under what uh, is the principle six of the women's empowerment principle promoted by the UN, which is to promote equality through community in initiatives and advocacy. This is a community, and there's space for a lot of advocacy to bring change forward. As key capital market participants, stock exchanges can lead the efforts to not only increase the number of women on boards of directors, but also to enhance the capacity of female directors to participate effectively in the good go governance of companies and to encourage the empowerment of the same. To cultivate new ideas in today's world of innovation, where the business itself is changing fast and the conditions of competitiveness are changing fast, the boards require a diversity of thinking from directors. They require directors who break the mold of uh, what a director is expected to be in many ways. That's what innovation is about, right? They not only require multi-gender, but they require multinational thinking. They require multi-ethnic thinking. They require difference. They thrive on difference. They don't thrive on similarities. But to achieve this also requires debunking a little bit the myths about boardroom diversity especially the myths concerning gender diversity that have become so widespread in recent years, in part because of the proactive efforts to change the mix, um, which can um, have unwanted implications or backfire depending on how you do it. So, um, so how to do that better? And, you know, let's, let's observe a little bit the, the facts first. Uh, uh, there are several pieces of very serious research at this point that show that companies with a higher percentage of women on their boards have fewer governance-related controversies, and at the same time have higher environmental, social, and risk management ratings and strategies. <coughs> These benefits contribute to increased investor confidence and better valuation. These benefits mean better business. So this is not a call for equity. This is not, or not just a call for equity, this is not a call for you know, justice across the group of contributors. It is also a goal for business efficiency. It is an asset. Um, it is a talent you want to enroll for business success into your boards. 
And that really is the main idea here. This is a very important finding. It means that we need more effective policy making concerning boardroom gender diversity all over the world, certainly not just in Sri Lanka. Female directors may be very different from male directors, and they may bring different perspectives to the board as a result. That's the asset. That's what we're seeking to enlist. But of course, to add value, it is important to have a good match as well, a good match between the director and the board, uh, a good match in terms of communication uh, reach, a good match in terms of influence capacity. So uh, these women, to be effective, who bring those talents to the board, to be effective, have to be empowered with the right board skills uh, and the right communication skills, and uh, maybe the extra bit of um, assertiveness and uh, uh, capacity to reach out for influence that sometimes they haven't been trained in the earlier part of their career to display. So this is a very important uh, learning for them as well, even if they have what is wanted and what, what it takes. Yeah? So just being different is not enough in itself. You have to be heard in your difference and you have to be effective in conveying your difference. So for women directors to add value, they must also bring more than just that different perspective. The boards should be willing and ready to use their skills, and they have to have the relevant skills, and the clear voice, uh, in other words, the capacity to influence, which is obviously where you know, acquiring the standard skill of board participation, as encouraged by Sid, is, is essential to women particularly, because they are less likely to have had some of that in the prior layers of their career. So how can we help them, how can we how can we do more to make sure that we get to this desirable outcome? There are several ways that this can be approached. I mean, first, women directors can benefit and need to benefit from specific instructions on the soft skills, such as you know, how to ensure their voices are heard, uh, how, uh, in addition to you know, the normal neutral, uh, gender neutral training on the practical aspects of directorship, such a board operation, roles and responsibility, relationships with management. So they need the standard package, and on top of it, they need the extra package, which is one of encouragement to, uh, to lean into further leadership. IFC has undertaken training uh, for high potential women uh, in many countries around the world uh, because of the value of providing this extra support to women who have the potential of becoming leaders in the boardroom. Second, and that's a role on the side of investors perhaps, um, institutional investors have a potential contribution there. They can include questions on gender diversity, on board compositions of companies that they contemplate for investment as part of their investment due diligence. And if the findings of research that I was referring to earlier uh, are well established, it means it's not that they can, it's that they should. Because it, there is this positive correlation with, with better governance. So there's, there's a, there's a benefit to that due diligence. And over time, that can make a difference. So both on the side of providing women who may not have the same experience with the gender neutral package of skills required to sit on the board effectively, and also giving them the extra encouragement of leadership training so that they actually dare to lean into influence and have an impact. So both are very important. Um, it's also very important for investors, as I was mentioning, to learn uh, you know, the findings of research on this and equate uh, women participation with better governance and better social responsibility on the boards and therefore make part of their due diligence to actually review women participation and the capacity of enterprises to promote women talent. I was also reminding us that uh, IFC is actually doing a lot to try to encourage the emergence of uh, women leadership across the world alongside its operations. And uh, it's uh, again aligned with the findings of research and it's a deliberate effort to tap into this, this, this talent uh, and uh, uh, these values here. Now, I would probably say to, to close this that uh, there's, there's a note of caution against placing unreasonable expectations on women directors. Uh, and uh, maybe expecting that you know, corporate performance will improve simply because women are nominated on boards. It doesn't work that way. And it's very important to acknowledge that too, so that uh, we don't actually uh, 
increase the odds of uh, developing the wrong perceptions here. I think it's actually very important to do that. We cannot expect women to fix the whole of society's problems by advocating for change just because they've been appoint appointed to boards. Uh, the whole board is responsible to address issues of change. And the courage of bringing change forward is one that every board member shares. So I think it's an important point on expectations. But for each country, it's, it is important to gain a better understanding of the root causes of the problem in a particular country. And um, they are sometimes broader than they appear to be. And to tackle these obstacles specifically in conjunction with other policies to make sure that we create a favorable environment for women to thrive and to help companies to thrive. Yeah? Uh, in some cases, it may not involve targeting uh, boards of company particularly. Uh, there are lots of gender issues that get in the way of women participation that are much broader, of course, than the ones that concern the board of directors. Um, as the country director for the World Bank in, in uh, Colombo and in uh, Sri Lanka, uh, we certainly uh, are part of a process where we're paying very close attention to gender balance across the country because it is also a factor uh, highly correlated with development impact. Women bring a positive impact in development and engaging them in uh, governance, engaging them in the political process, engaging them on political representation, engaging them with decision making at the community level, engaging them as entrepreneurs is, is absolutely essential to uh, the development outcome of the country. Some of the issues that we're encountering in Sri Lanka on gender, which are worthy of full attention, are for instance, the low level of women participation in the workforce. Not that women should not have a choice. Of course, it's a very personal decision to join or not the workforce, and particularly when you have children at home. So this freedom should stay with women. But when a country like Sri Lanka, uh, which has better grades and school attainment of girls at the secondary level, uh, greater entrance of young women into university, higher education than men, better grades of the same in the university training, right, finds itself with a stable over 10 years rate of participation of women in the, in the labor force, sort of at, the, at an appearance ceiling of 35%, it has to be too low somewhere. And certainly by international standards, it is too low, right? It actually means that we're losing a lot of available talent to the marketplace at a time where, in many ways, there's a drying up of the labor market for skilled uh, labor. And this is highly correlated uh, to the chances of the country to bring in foreign direct investment, to improve uh, its productivity, to uh, increase its export orientation and its competitiveness globally. So here there's a synergy. Um, so you don't want to take away the choice from women, but you want to focus on the synergy and ask yourself why only 35% of women and why a lot of educated women are eventually not entering the labor force or being retained by, uh, by uh, the uh, job market. There's a very important question here that needs some facilitation. And um, of course, when you look around, you do find things. There's a continuation uh, of some existence of legal gaps in, uh, in legislation about the treatment of women, including labor law, uh, and they have to be looked at. Uh, there are issues of incentives at the level of a firm. I mean, currently in Sri Lanka, the cost of a maternity leave is bearing on the firm only, right? In most countries, it's socialized for social security in such a way that you don't create a disincentive to employing young women, right? In Sri Lanka, it's still bearing on the firm. So these things have to be looked at because you don't want to increase, uh, I would say, the obstacle to that pool of talent to, to, to get in, engaged, yeah? There are also a lot of practical issues that women, and particularly young mothers, face in joining the labor force. And it goes from availability of childcare, especially for young children, which is still very limited. The World Bank is actually you know, investing with the government in early childhood development facilities currently, because it's a very important point for, for women. So some of them are practical issues having to do with childcare. Some of the issues uh, which we may have less information about, are also inhibitors of women participation. They may have to do with safety in transports. They may have to do with, you know, schedule and uh, lighting of streets and all the things that are great facilitators of women capacity to uh, have the safe mobility required to join the marketplace. So all these things have to be looked at. Uh, they all are on a different scale. A lot of them won't be activated from the Colombo Stock Exchange, evidently. But they are all linked, in a way, in the capacity of society to 
uh, make full use of the talent of uh, women. So these issues have to be addressed one by one. The stock exchange community has its own um, uh, responsibility and its opportunities to influence this outcome at what is the highest and the most visible level. And uh, I think the opportunities are very high for doing this. The trends are good and the talent is there. So uh, let me, in closing this, let me join uh, my, my um, appreciation again for the invitation and my encouragement to the whole community to make full use of this uh, plentiful talent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, before I start, apologies from Radhika for being unable to be here today. Um, the area of gender empowerment has always been of great concern to her. And she, uh, before she was uh, the special representative on children and armed conflict, was for many years the special rap UN Special Rapporteur on uh, Violence Against Women. So I'm here as her substitute, and in fact, I'm very glad to be the last speaker here because, Madame Plotz, you have helped me, uh, you have touched on most of the issues that I would have thought I would have to talk about in terms of gender empowerment within the boardroom. Um, so I won't talk too much on that. Um, let me start by saying uh, I'm very happy to be here as part of this initiative of the, the joint collaboration between the Sri Lanka Institute of Directors and the Columbus Stock Exchange today. Uh, the Sri Lanka Institute of Directors, I believe your mandate is mainly uh, encouraging better corporate governance through uh, encouraging better leadership skills within uh, the corporate sector. Hmm. And of course, taking your message outside of the very narrow confines of the uh, leading corporates, corporations, I suppose we should say, in Colombo, into the regions. Uh, so you're creating two different types of leadership skills. One in nearly, and mainly in encouraging regional participation in the workforce. Now, going to today's topic on gender equality, I suppose. Um, for me, personally, it's a matter of great shock and concern, um, given that we are such a highly women-driven economy. Uh, women, after all, form the bulk of our workforce that earn our foreign exchange for us. Um, they are the bulk of our plantation sector, our garment sector, and our migrant worker sector. Um, the lack of translation of this participation uh, into the higher structures of the corporate sector is uh, frankly quite shocking for me. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, many of you are aware of this, but the corporate sector lags even behind the political governance process in terms of leadership among women. Um, in a country where over the last few years a large number of women have begun to be appointed to our Supreme Court, our public service is being, the leadership is being dominated by women, and the academia is almost all over Sri Lanka completely dominated by women. It's a matter, it should be a matter of great concern that the corporate sector lags so far behind. Given, as Madame Plot said, there's absolutely no block to women participating in this sector and moving upwards. We contribute to our, our economy in a way that men don't seem to do. Um, and on top of it, we are better educated, we are more competitive in universities, we graduate at a higher level every year for the last 15 years. Our age of marriage is much higher than our counterpart countries in the region, and, so, and in fact in some countries in Europe. So there's nothing to hold us back from moving into the leadership of the corporate sector too. I uh, come from a small law firm, 75% to 80% of my uh, income earning earners in my law firm are women. Many of them are mothers, some of them are daughters, some of them are grandmothers, and they have multiple responsibilities, and they work very hard, and my firm is very successful. So I don't understand what, where the block actually lies. Now, to get back to the initial question, I suppose one of the issues that you do need to deal with, and I see that Sri Lanka, the SLID's work on uh, 
regional consultations and uh, meetings would help with this, is to actually look at the migrant worker sector and see where are these women? Why are they not uh, forming the bulk of our investor sector? Why are they not forming the bulk of our entrepreneurial sector in the regions where they come from? And I'm hoping that you'll be able to work with the Chamber of Commerce on that. Um, similarly, then if we were to come back into the boardrooms, uh, I think it's time for us to really recognize that the old boys network has to end. And so the Sri Lanka Institute uh, of Directors program on uh, training, on boardroom training, I believe it's called, would be of great value. Not because women are actually not capable of being good uh, members of their boards already, but perhaps this uh, little title of I've completed this program might help us in getting to those boards, getting onto those boards. Thank you very much. Congratulations for this initiative. And I look forward to the results.